Creating a pipeline between Simmons College and JCPS is designed to build more minority teachers. It'll work like a pipeline or a revolving door, a positive one that's expected to help close the achievement gap. The students at Simmons in the School of Education uh, doing their observation hours in JCPS, doing their student teaching in JCPS. And then after graduation, getting hired by JCPS. President Simmons said that education is the means and manner of personal elevation. And with that, higher education is within reach. The reason why this partnership is so significant is first of all, we have the greatest educator in America. Spearheading the effort of creating an accredited teacher preparation program at Simmons is Louisville native Sharon Porter Robinson, former Assistant Secretary of Education with the U.S. Department of Education. The greatest educator in America. Ah, when I was growing up in Louisville, Simmons College was where ministers were trained and it was not really considered a part of the mainstream of higher education unless you were interested in theology. Unlike today, Simmons is in the middle of addressing the important goals and expectations we should have of educational institutions. Along with our partnership with the National Baptist Convention of America International which is the second largest black organization in America. Part of what we want to do is become a national recruitment group for Simmons College in its partnership with the Jefferson County Education Board. This will become a model for other school districts around this country to look at. And then HBCU specialize in preparing black teachers to teach in the classroom. You're talking about something different. You're talking about bringing all that together, the history, the dynamic of Simmons, the legacy. A legacy described at Simmons as excellence in education since 1879 officially recognized as the nation's 107th HBCU in 2015 as a historic college and university. Simmons not only receives annual dollars from the federal government, but now belongs to a fraternity of educational institutions with an amazing history of success stories. The statistics on HBCU graduates are overwhelming. A recent article in Newsweek cited that black colleges produce 70% of all black dentists and doctors, and 50% of black engineers and public school teachers. And while HBCUs account for only 3% of the nation's colleges, they account for nearly 20% of the degrees awarded to African Americans. Dr. Ricky Jones, director and chair of the Pan-African Studies Department at the University of Louisville and Morehouse graduate, is an exemplary model of HBCU excellence. And so when you see the disproportionate statistics, when you really think about the culture of HBCUs, you know, from Cheney to Morehouse to Spelman to Simmons, it's really no surprise that you see so many terminal degrees, you know, PhDs, MDs, JDs, awarded to people who started out at HBCUs. So we ought to just kind of take a minute and reflect on the reality of Simmons and the position it occupies in addressing something that we haven't been able to solve yet. The Civil War had just ended and the passing of the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. It was a time of rejoicing for the newly freed slaves who looked towards creating a new life. One of the first faith-based institutions to be established in the United States of America after slavery was an organization called the General Association of Kentucky Baptists right here in the state of Kentucky. In 1865, 12 black Baptist churches met in Louisville, Kentucky at the Fifth Street Baptist Church and began discussing their need for schools aimed at educating and training African Americans, many of whom were just one generation away from slavery. Their task with creating a new black intelligentsia that are, that are gonna become the socio-political leaders of black America, that's really the context that Simmons fit into as we we're going into the 20th century. November 24th, 1879 is the official date when the state's only black college opened its doors as the Kentucky Normal Theological Institute. It was a normal school. The word normal means teacher college. So it started for the purpose of training the black professional class 
and especially teachers. Some of the most prestigious names in education, in law, in every facet of community life were involved with Simmons College. The products coming out of those schools were incredibly stellar, but black people are always a stellar people. All they needed was an equal opportunity. The list of influential people connected to Simmons reads like the who's who of black history. One of the most notable among them, the predecessor of William J. Simmons. The great tragedies, I think, of any kid's education is not to be exposed to giants that are right here in the community. And uh, perhaps one of the great autobiographies that was written by a former slave who was a hero during the Civil War was the autobiography of Elijah P. Mars. He became the first president of Simmons to show you how selfless he was and how he was only driven by the desire to have a great school. He stepped aside in order to bring in the giftedness and intelligence of uh, uh, William J. Simmons. That excellence is always there. As the Greeks talked about, that arete always reaching for something higher, not just for themselves, but those around them. So not only are HBCU graduates usually successful, they're also usually leaders when you dig down into what's going on in communities all over the country. William J. Simmons was known as one of the great orators of his day. I mean, he was considered the preeminent educator of the 19th century. When you talk about excellence, black people have always understood they had to be better. So HBCUs have always simply been a conduit for that excellence. They aspired for black people to be lawyers and teachers and physicians, the professional class, and they wanted to pattern themselves after Howard University. At its height, the nationally recognized Institution of Higher Learning was a thriving liberal arts university with departments in medicine, law, business, music, and theology. Some historians have described it as the black Harvard of the South. It also had a competitive athletic department with baseball, football, and men and women's basketball teams. So he set the trajectory for Simmons, and there were two primary goals that he had. Goal number one, was to create a black professional class, which they did. The black middle class in Kentucky was trained at Simmons. That's the only place they could go. The Day Law, named after Carl Day, who introduced the bill in the Kentucky House of Representatives, prohibited students of color from attending the same school as white students. His second goal was to create an institution that was black governed. Education was important to African Americans at that time for the same reason that education is important to African Americans now. It is absolutely essential that black people understood the system in which they were functioning no matter how unfair that system was or is. The product and vision of former slaves, its story reads as one of pride, determination, trailblazing, and also tragedy. And then a huge catastrophic economic development takes it down and we don't know how to hold on to the institution itself. This was a, a time of extreme racism and the access to opportunity, it, it was bad. So those institutions that were black suffered severely as a result of the depression of 1929. In 1930, Simmons University was forced to close nearly all of its departments. And for the first time in the school's 50 year history, the only courses offered were in theology. That story got dropped off the consciousness of the city. Simmons College of Kentucky, its dream delayed, its history hidden, but its destiny would not be denied. And just as the mighty Phoenix rises out of the ashes, 
Simmons is the only HBCU in history to make a comeback. And no college university in American history has ever lost its campus and returned back to the original campus that it lost 77 years later. Today, Simmons is about impacting its community and changing the lives of students. It serves as a beacon of light to an underserved population. Embedded in its mission statement is the phrase, to create agents of change. Perhaps through this engagement, we will talk about each of us challenging each of us to bring forward 20 young people 30 young people, whatever you can take on to help illuminate a path to a future that they may have difficulty seeing. You really touched on what I think is probably one of, if not the most important function of HBCUs. There are certain kids that are coming up in familial cultures. They're going to be successful no matter what. What HBCUs do is they set up a situation where students understand that black people have a history worth studying, lives worth living, and a future worth constructing. And who better to do that than somebody standing in front of them who looks like them and can function without fear and say, you can do this too. These children are developing an orientation to the world that certainly includes their immediate survival, but also must include, must include a sense of what their future holds. When you take institutions like that, peopled by those types of professors and administrators who love those kids and teach them to function without fear, there is no substitute for that. They've been able to take those lost souls and produce something at the end that sometimes their lost parents don't even recognize. So then the children can go back and rescue their elders. And that's as it should be. Many say in a child shall lead, right? Oh, I love seeing black professors. And I love my teachers. I like, guess the best part. But he pushed me enough and cared for me enough to let me know that I'm more than the choices and decisions that I'm making. I love my HBCU. I love my HBCU. I love my HBCU. Simmons College of Kentucky. Simmons College of Simmons Kentucky. Simmons College of Kentucky. It's literally changing my it's life. It's literally changing my life. It's literally changing my life.